In this video, we're going to learn how to operate this hotspot TC welder. This equipment is conformed by the control console, the negative or ground end, and the positive end. The control console can be controlled through the power knob, the trigger button, and the power switch. The power switch has two options. If it is in the downward position, the power is set to normal. Or if you flip it upwards, it is set on the turbo position. The power knob contains two different levels of power. The inner numbers are for the normal power. And the outer numbers are for the turbo power option. The control console contains three different LEDs, which are the charging LED, which is a red LED, the P1, and the P2 LED, which are green LEDs. These LEDs will show you or will indicate you when the welder is charging, if you see the, this LED on, or the green LEDs will be on if the welder is ready to weld. Before proceeding to operate this equipment, make sure that you have your personal protective equipment, use shaded goggles, inf an inflammable coat, and welding gloves. Also, it is important to use a respirator mask so that you don't have to inhale all the fumes that are going to be produced by the welding. You also have to make sure that you have the lab safety training, you have testing approval, you have experience operating the machine. Make sure that inflammable or explosive materials are not in the area. Make sure that the area is well ventilated and make sure that the welder is turned off by looking at the power knob and making sure that it is in the off position. Then proceed to make sure that the welder is connected to electricity. Also make sure that the area you're going to be working over is not an electricity conductive area. In this case, I'm using a glass to protect myself. The first step to weld a thermocouple is to make sure that your thermocouple wire does not have any insulation on its ends. Then we can proceed to start welding the thermocouple. To, to create freestanding junctions, first you need to make sure that you're wearing your shaded goggles. Then clamp the carbon block to the drill press vise. Attach the magnet which contains, which is attached to the negative end of the, of the welder to the drill press vise. Make sure that the pliers are properly attached to the positive cable. Select the pliers depending on the cable size. Set the toggle switch or power switch into the normal position, which is downwards. Set the control knob to the required power. This power level will depend on the gauge of the wire that you're using. In this case, I'm using a 30 gauge wire. That's when I'm gonna set a 20 watts per second as my power. Be careful because by rotating the power, the power knob, this will turn on the welder. So I'll go ahead and rotate the power knob to 20 watts second.
Notice how the green LEDs are on, which means that the welder is ready to create a weld. Hold the exposed thermocouple wires with the pliers. Make sure that the pliers are in direct contact with the exposed cable and not touching the insula insulator. Then press the trigger button and touch the carbon block with the exposed thermocouple wire ends. This will create the welding and be careful with the sparks. Release the snap action button and remove the pliers from the carbon block and let the capacitor charge until the green LEDs turn on for a second weld. To weld a freeze standing junction to the specimen, first release the carbon block and clamp the specimen to the drill press vise. Make sure that the specimen area that in which you're going to weld is clean. Check for the green LEDs to be on. Press the trigger button to start the welding and keep it pressed. Touch the specimen with the free standing joint and this will create the welding. Be careful with these parts. Release the trigger button and let the capacitor charge until the green LED turns on for a second weld. This is how the weld thermocouple will look like. Once you're done welding your thermocouple, turn off the welder by rotating the power knob to the off position, disconnect the welder from electricity, and do not forget to clean your working area.